All right, I am here with Steve Clark of the Portland Timbers. Steve, how are you doing during this uh, crazy time, man? Oh, man. Well, I um, had a little bit of a you know, nagging injury, so I rested and did some physical therapy for the first week. Um, but today I had my first workout um, inside our house in our backyard, so um, it felt good to get moving. Um, I'm kind of taking it, as we discussed a little earlier, I'm taking it with the growth mindset of just, you know, because this is what's given, there's nothing else. So I'm going to make the best of it. And there's opportunities here to get better. There's opportunities to read, rest your body, strengthen your body. So that's what I'm doing. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I think everyone's wondering how we're going to get through this. And um, I think just sitting down and planning, okay, what, if, what are some things that I need to accomplish? What can I get better at? What are my weaknesses? Um, and how can I improve? Is there, is there a book that you're reading or that you could recommend to everybody like off the top of your mind? I don't mean to put you on the spot. But. No, no, of course. Of course, man. Tons. Um, first of all, I think that, okay, so if you're, um, and we're, this is going out to your goalkeeper academy, if you're in yeah. that academy, I mean, it should be rule number one that you're setting goals, number one. for the, Not for, I mean, you want to set goals for your season, that's fine, but I'm talking daily goals, weekly goals, and then end of lockout goals because I have had a very difficult time in my life kind of setting goals. I've had one main goal, which is to be a pro, which I've done, done quite well and been industrial and doing that. But I have to set daily goals because I'll end up just sitting and watching Netflix or um, I have a pretty <laughs> ADD. I have a pretty ADD mind. I'll just yeah. get lost on YouTube for like three, four hours. It's so easy. so yeah. it, it's easy to do. So what I try to do is set daily goals and try to get a daily schedule going. Um, and uh, the book that I would recommend and it's probably the starting point of any sports psychology book and the, perhaps the best it's called mindset. Um, and I believe it's Carol Dweck mindset by Carol Dweck. It's the difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. A growth mindset is basically, you know, I may not be at, have that skill level now, but I can grow into that. And a fixed mindset is essentially, I don't have that. I don't have that um, skill in my game because that's just not me. I am fixed. This is just who I am. Exactly. And, 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 uh, the fixed mindset is really, you know, if it's not death to a career or to a soccer, little budding soccer career or pro career, it will be eventually. And the growth mindset will carry you through soccer and beyond. Yeah, man. I, I know we'll get into your career leading up to right now, but, um, you can definitely speak to a lot of that. I think, um, it'll be good to hear kind of your story and, and we'll get into all that, but I want to start with, um, just, I mean, we're not going to go, uh, too long with club and all that, but this is for club goalkeepers for the most part, um, you know, geared towards the academy kids. Who did you emulate growing up? Who, who was the one person that you watch and you're like, I, I want to be like that person? Yeah, well, I mean, so I graduated high school in 2004. So, I mean, when I was playing in, in, in uh, the nine, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, there wasn't tons of soccer on TV. I mean, it was just getting going, you know, when Tim Howard went to uh, Manchester United. So Tim Howard is one I followed. Casey Keller were and Brad, Brad um, were my, probably my first two guys who I, you know, I just try to read anything about. I remember I had one VHS of a Champions League game recorded that a, that a buddy gave me at, when I was a freshman in high school, and I would just watch that because there wasn't the, all the resources. Um, but I would say Casey Keller definitely was, was a guy who, obviously the national team number one for the majority of the time I was growing up, so he was somebody I, I certainly loved. Um, and then Oliver Kahn was, was definitely like his mentality, you know, his yeah. intensity was something yeah. I just loved. Yeah, um, Casey Keller. So I, growing up watching World Cups and stuff, Friedel was kind of the guy that I really, really uh, enjoyed watching. But Keller was right there as well, and I got to, I had the opportunity to play against Casey Keller um, when he was with Seattle. So that was yes. really cool for me on multiple occasions. And one time, I uh, I picked up a debatable back pass. I mean, this was a fifty-fifty tackle at half field. I picked it up because it came flying at me from the box, and the referee said it was a back pass. Uh, somebody said Casey Keller was like, yeah, that's only been a rule since like 1940 or something like that. It was, I enjoyed that. <laughs> so I, we, we talked about it when I was doing the broadcast and stuff and he was laughing. That's about great. It. But, uh, but yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. Um, so yeah, the VHS thing, I'll explain what that means to, uh, to these kids as well. Cause they have no idea. That's right. That's a <laughs> Yeah. That's it. That's a tape for the, for the kids. Yeah, so, VHS um, tape. so growing up, you, you grew up in Michigan um, what was yeah. the club environment like that? What, how, uh, what age did you just focus solely on goalkeeping? Yeah, good question. Um, 
I, I, I tried basketball in middle school. I just wasn't very good. I did some track. I was an okay hurdler. But it became pretty clear by the time I was eighth grade freshman that, like, if I was going to excel in athletics, it was going to be goalkeeper. I was just kind of naturally, quite, you know, naturally good at it. Um, and then, yeah, I would say freshman year in high school is when I kind of went pretty. And when I say that I turned it on, I mean, I just didn't dabble. I just went full, full, yeah, full, full on. and I, full on, you know, and, um, really, you know, lifting, jumping rope when there was no soccer to be played. Um, the club scene and when I grew up in Mason, Michigan, a smaller town near East Lansing, they had a local, there wasn't academy teams, obviously back then. I didn't really have a chance to go down and try out for ODP. It was just, I was a small town kid. So I, when I was 16, I could drive. I started driving and I tried out for Vardar and that's when, which was, yeah. which was the big team in Michigan. That was kind of my big break as far as that got me to division one soccer. Um, I still, I made the state team in ODP uh, my senior year, which was like, and I didn't play much. I was, I was kind of like pretty raw. I was a good athlete. Sure. Luckily Oakland university, Eric Poe is a very good goalkeeper trainer there. And I, I, one thing I will say, Andy, is I've had pretty good vision. And I think that's really important for young kids who want to succeed, have vision, how your career is going to work out. And by vision, I mean how to get from D, C, B, how to get to A if you're standing at E or how to get, you know, how to get to these points in your career. And when I saw in, at Oakland University and Eric Pogue was just like a really good goal. First of all, they had great goalkeepers. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Weesey at the time was incredible. And he was just, he was a goalkeeper himself and he was really into goalkeepers. And they, they trained hard. I saw one of their training sessions. So I walked on to Oakland. And when, when I was 18, I was, you know, not a great good goalkeeper at all, even for club level. And by the time I was 20, I would assume that I was one of the better goalkeepers, even before I played an NCAA game. Yeah. I was one of the better goal, division one goalkeepers in my opinion. Now if people can say this or that, but sure. I was, I just made, I made such a big jump in my career from those two years. It, it was awesome. That's awesome. So you said you walked on, did you have any, um, what was your recruiting process like? Did you have any other schools you were looking at or was it kind of like um, Oakland's pretty close by? I, I love the environment there. I'm going to, no matter what, I'm going to go there. Well, I had the University of Cincinnati that, that offered me a little scholarship. Um, but also I'd say this too, and, and this is important for high school kids. University of Cincinnati sent me a letter and that was a big school in, in the Midwest. And it was like the, the biggest school at that time that was like kind of actively recruiting me. And I went down as a, a senior and I went to their soccer camp because I was like, look, I got, I have the ability. This team wants me. I'm going to go there and put myself in front of those coaches for a week, even though they didn't have a great reputation for a good summer camp. I just went there and I busted up their summer camp and I looked and by the end of it, they were like, wow, like they're recruiting me even harder. So I don't think, I think high schoolers should be really, if you're interested in going for it, you got to go for it. So I drove down to Cincinnati went to their summer camp. They ended up offering me a deal. It was so expensive to go to the University of Cincinnati and Oakland had come on, you know, like with that vision, I saw myself getting better at Oakland and, and University of Cincinnati at the time did not have a goalkeeper trainer. So I was yeah, like, I mean, how are you going to better yourself? Right? Exactly. So that's how I basically chose Oakland. So I didn't have many options. Michigan state didn't come around. There was really nobody. That's, you know, there's like a clear, you and I kind of have crossed paths a, a few different times, but never really got to know each other that well. Um, but what I, what I've always admired, what I've always heard about you and, and just talking to you now as well, what I want my goalkeepers to understand is there is a uh, clear intention at, at all different facets, at all different levels of from club to college to even the professional level, which we'll get into of uh, you setting a goal figure out how to do it and then and then basically busting your butt doing whatever it takes to do that i mean like you said you didn't have to go to that camp you went there um you know you you kind of set the tempo there and then um you know moving on if it's not is it my understanding that you uh, negotiated your own trial as well overseas as well absolutely yeah well i backpacked um I mean, I backpacked through Norway, cold, you know, I was just calling teams up on the phone, you know, um, my, when I'm, yeah. you know, so, I mean, I think that I, I, I guess like I, we, I would love to have, you know, the question I would ask those young players, you know, it's like, how do you think things happen? You know, that, you know what I mean? Like, how do you get a division one? You know, it's like things just aren't always offered up on your plate, you know, and, and Andy, it's nice when, you know, you have a good year like you did with the crew and you get all those 
you know, those accolades and, and you're looking for that new contract and you get given these number one spots or you get offered scholarships because you play, but things just don't always get laid down at your feet. Life yeah. isn't, you know, being a pro a soccer player or, you know, trying to get a division one scholarship there, it's not always just laid at your feet and life is very easy. Now for some guys, I assume who are so talented, that things just happen very easily and they end up, you know, maybe in the premier league. That's fine. That's just never been my um, experience. Um, so working for things and kind of like being the architect of your own career, making things happen for yourself is a huge part of, I believe life. And I'm not going to sit back and wait for things to happen. I'm going to go make things happen. And, and that's kind of cliche, but I, I, that's just a reality. That, I think that's great. I mean, uh, because even, you know, even if you're not successful, if you have that mentality, more times than not, you're going to end up on top. And I think that's one thing is like you and I probably not the most highly recruited goalkeepers coming out of high school. Um, yep. You know, I remember what it was like. I went to every summer camp you could possibly imagine. Um, ended up being seen by Kentucky at IU soccer camp. Um, but, you know, I mean, you had to go to them. They, no one was coming for me either. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so you're, you know, you have a great career at Oakland. Um, obviously, yep. uh, that experience kind of working with Eric there, I've heard amazing things. Um, yes. Then I believe, were you, were you drafted or were you looking to go on trial? Was it with uh, Seattle? Or do I have that wrong? Um, no. Uh, okay. So I, uh, I, I didn't get drafted. I didn't even get invited to the combine, which, which again is I think important to talk about was like a really big blow back then for me. It's hard to describe like now. Okay. So that was 13 years ago, probably to our 12, but you, you still know, feel it? sorry, you still feel that like, Oh yeah, for sure. I still right. remember exactly like p pulling up the list on the computer. Yeah. And it was right when soccer by eyes was getting big as the blog. Right. Yeah. And that's what I was reading a lot about the draft prep. And I remember seeing the goalkeepers and, you know, when you read it and you kind of just go blank and you kind of go fuzzy, like, yeah, it was just a really big blow because I had seen my career being like going to the combine, you know, going there, performing well, getting drafted, you're in the MLS. And when I didn't see it, you know, it, even now, like that really bothers me. You know, I really think I was good enough um, to be in the, you know, to be in that combine. And, and it brings me to another point just about motivation. Like it, for, it, to this day, that really upsets me, you know? And that some people perhaps can call that thin skin, but that's motivation still. Like when I think of that, I want to go out and train right now. Like, yeah. and, I, and I mean that like 100%, that really pisses me off still. Um, but when I saw that, I was like, all right, like I immediately pivoted after probably a couple of days of disappointment to, all right, how am I going to get to my next step? Like, and that idea, okay, one door closes, damn it. Like what, 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 what can I do? What do I have to do next? Yeah. To, to kind of get to the goal. And for me, that was like, I had a smaller agent and I'm bugging him every day. I got a trial in Norway. So this was even before, right as I left for that trial, Salt Lake City, Real Salt Lake discovered me and they were like inviting me to preseason camp. I went to the Norwegian trial instead. I got to Norway. This is January of 2009. I got there and, um, you know, it was, it was, it was a real smack in the face of what it's like, life abroad. I mean, we were in Northern Norway, very cold. I didn't have a laptop. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I, I didn't know how to travel abroad. <laughs> Most I people wouldn't even have gone, I think. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess, yeah. I mean, I, I was just hungry, you know, and, and, yeah. um, and I went over. And it didn't really work out that well. Um, and uh, so they didn't offer me a deal on the grounds of, like, they didn't think I'd fit into the, the team. And, I, and I, at that time in my career, I mean, I was a little bit too bold, I think, for going on trial. And, you know, that, that kind of – whether that confidence and, and, you know, protection mechanism to make sure I perform well, I think rub people the wrong way, which you may experience some of that when I came to the crew and train, but I've always <laughs> had a little bit of that, like I've always had a little bit of that, um, you know, uh, I, I look, I'm just a big personality. So that didn't work out. So I went to Salt Lake and, um, I was there for, this is the 2009, that preseason, as you can remember, was longer. That was like six week preseason. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was long. And I got almost to the last day and they were like, basically kind of said the same thing. Direct words from Jeff Kassar was like, look, like we really like you, but you're not a third choice goalkeeper. Like we can't see you really sitting here on our, on our bench. Like 
you know, it's just not a good fit. I had kind of bumped heads with a Ramondo at the time, which is probably not a good thing as a rookie trialist. I, I don't think that's something to follow in my footsteps from the younger goalies. But they basically were like, look, you, we don't see, see you fitting in here. And then – so there I was without an MLS team. And, I, and then I went further down to Miami FC, which was in and then in the USL. So that's in, that was in February of 2009. They let me go. Then in eight, right at the end of March, I went to uh, now defunct Real Maryland, USL 2 at the time. They let me go, and I was in the PDL that summer. Wow. Wow. That's, dude, that's, uh, that's not A to B to C. That's, that's everywhere else, man. Um, but it just goes to show you, like, what you said about, I think a lot of kids, including myself probably, would go into that Salt Lake situation and just, man, that's, that's Nick Ramondo, right? Like, that's, that's a pretty cool deal. And, yes. you know, every time, every time I had the opportunity to play against Nick, I didn't think of it that way necessarily. But as a, as a young kid just on trial, maybe I would have. Um, but, like, just to be like, no, I mean, like, I want your job. Like, I don't, you know, and yeah. you, you've never, you know, my experience with you, I, I'm completely the opposite in the way – my person, I was like, I don't, I, I mean, I'm, I, I get my motivation the same as, sure. same as you, sure. like people tell me no, that kind of stuff. But, but I, I think I, I think I'm able to just um, kind of go with the flow a little bit more. Whereas what I respect about you a lot is like, you know, um, if, if you're, if you're not the guy, if you're not, if people are telling you no, it's, I mean, you can see it on your face. Like you can see it. It makes you work that much harder. Um, it, it makes you, um, you know, I mean, I respected that about you. I always have my last year with Columbus was 2013. Mm -hmm. What was it like coming back into MLS at that point? Cause 2014, you were with the crew. Um, and I was with, uh, yeah, I was with sporting. I, I got traded sporting at that point. That's um, right. And my mentality was like, man, like it could have been anyone. It could have been Joe Schmo. Um, and I would have been, there was always something about like that, that was my job um, sure. and it motivated sure. me, but like knowing it was you and knowing your work rate, I think like that season, that 2014 season, I, I mean, it let, it let a, it lit a little extra under me. Um, and it didn't have to be, you It could have been anyone. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, what was that like for you coming back in? Well, I definitely, yeah. I mean, and especially like uh, since you played in Columbus too, it's kind of a special city when you live there for a long yeah. time. You played yeah. there for a long time too. Yeah, right? eight years, man. Yeah. Eight, yeah. Yeah. So you played there for a long time. And also, you know, it's always difficult when you, when a coach comes in too, and it's like coming in with new guys and, sure. and, um, new ownership, I, new coach, yeah. new ownership, new guys. And you're, you know, you're kind of going out with the narrative and, and, um, but leaving I know when I left Columbus as well like it was definitely like it took me I mean that's part of the reason why I went to Denmark after I left Columbus because I mean I think there's some sometimes your body gets injured but also sometimes I think your psychology and your emotion yeah. gets injured you know yeah. when you leave a place and I definitely felt that when I left Columbus um but me in 2014 you know I was so excited to be back after playing four years in Norway that um, it was just like a, one of those years where like kind of everything went right in the field. Everything was right off the field. I was so, so happy to be back in the United States and living in Columbus, which is a very cool city, a very livable city. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was really just a, 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 a wonderful year. Well. I mean, that's a good exactly. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's cool, man. Um, no, I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was one of those deals where I ended up in Kansas City. That's my hometown. Uh, and then as right. I watched, as I watched you play and it was like, okay, I've seen him come up. I kind of know, like it was, yeah. it, it ended up being a cool thing. It was like, uh, cause I think the goalkeeper union is something I believe in. Um, sure. completely. and I had this, you know, I, I've always kind of respected your work rate, your attitude about the craft and how, you know, you, it, it wasn't exactly, uh, the same as mine, but I think that's okay. You know, I think that's okay. And I think goalkeepers, you know, the club kids that I work with, some of them are a little bit peppier than others and some of them just don't want to say a word and they just want to, you know, and I sure. think that's important that like they understand that, you know, we're still pushing each other for the right reasons, you know? I, you know, I think that's such a good point, Andy, because look, there's positive and negatives to every personality type. Okay. Your personality was formed. I'm not a child psychologist, but way before you were a goalkeeper, right? For sure. Okay. So, so if you have a little more easygoing, even keel personality, that's going to help you so much during a, during a season 
stay me stay in the the, the positive, you know, not too high, not too low. Yeah. Okay. So you're probably able to get over mistakes faster and, and and stay more consistent mentally after a great game because you're more even keel. And maybe you're maybe one of the things you needed was like the, to work on in your psychology when you're playing is like, okay, today I'm going to go after and chase it hard and go out and be really in uh, that competitive fire that comes really naturally to me. Because at my personality, which is very naturally aggressive and a lot of a lot of motivation, I struggle staying even keel. I can go very high after a game, and if I make a mistake, I can go very low. So every goalkeeper needs to under get to get to know themselves. You have to know yourself as much. I mean, or get, you have to know yourself enough on the field to know what are okay. What parts of the game do I need to work on? Do sure. I need to be com- work on my competitiveness and and going after it hard, or or do I need to work on okay, Steve? Don't lose your crap in training stay focused stay stay into your job and if, if if you let in a soft goal rebound so those type of things i think are individually based but the starting point for both of those i believe is wanting to get better and going even into the deep realms of your own psychology being like what do i need to work on yeah i think that's a great point i think uh it, it's probably one of the um the self-awareness piece i think is one of the biggest things that I wish I would have had a, a better grasp on um, at an earlier age. I think, uh, I think it's something that could have really benefited me and helped shape, you know, what are my weaknesses and what am I just living in my comfort zone or, or whatever? I think that's really important. And, um, you know, I think for, for kids that are watching this, I wish I would have gone, I, I did an interview with a sports psychologist. I wish I would have gone to see one. Um, I never thought you just kind of internalize everything. Right. Um, but I think that's a great point, man. So, uh, from Columbus, obviously you were, uh, I think defensive player of the year, 2004, That's right. went to yep. MLS cup. I mean, dude, you had a, you had a great run, um, with Columbus. And then, um, what happened, what happened after that? You made your way. Was it straight to straight to Portland after that? Right. Or was no, it- I went to Denmark. I went to Denmark. Okay, six yeah, months. Then you went to Denmark then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I went to Denmark, which was, which was basically like, I, I wanted to try to get, um, free in the summer transfer window uh, in 2017. So I signed a six month deal in Denmark, which was okay. The team was okay. It wasn't great, but it was like just kind of a stopgap. And I, and I performed, I, I was okay, but it wasn't like really good form. I never settled into like top, top notch form to, to attract bigger clubs in mainland Europe. So there, a lot of things fell through. Um, and then I signed with DC in August of 2017, stayed in DC till August of 2018 I got waived oh, right, by DC. Right, right. I got waived by DC, which, and then I went to Portland and and then kind of took over the number one spot here and 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 performed quite well. So that's where we stand into this. <laughs> now we're on we're on pause. As we're, we're on, on pause, yeah. uh, dude. Uh, when you when you went to Portland, I was like, just watch. I was I was telling people, I go, it's it's only a matter of time. I mean, I love that. Really Thank you, man. Like, yeah, no, I mean, I, I I'm telling you, I, I was talking to a bunch of. Uh, kind of my goalkeeper uh, family here in, in town. I'm just like, sure. And I'm just like, this, this guy is going to eat it up. N- nothing to take away from any of the other goalkeepers there. Sure. Um, sure. But yeah, I mean, uh, it was just inevitable in my mind. So um, is, is, would you say out of all the stops, cause you've been everywhere, man, what, what's been the, what's been the, uh, the place that you, I don't know, I take it for any reason, but what, what's the place you love the most? What's the best life? What's yeah, the- I mean, I, there, there, so it's like every – it's funny, man. You know, yeah, I had my first love in Honefoss, that first, you know, kind of club that I, where yeah. I played for four years. And then Columbus was kind of like you came back to the States and an ex-wife, you know what I mean? But, you know, <laughs> you know and then Portland now with this, how wonderful the city is, the club is, is, is just so big compared to other MLS clubs. I mean, it yeah. really is such a great resource. It's somewhere that I hope to be for a long time. Um, and obviously the fan, you know, winning pl- supporters player of the year here, having a good year last year. We feel really set up here. And I think as you'll, you know, relate as a pro, it's like it's, you know, longevity staying in a city is, is where soccer, pro soccer becomes fun. When you start moving around, that's when it becomes a drain on your wife, your family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so this is, um, you know, this is a, a place where, I could see myself finishing my career and, 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 awesome. and we were, and the nature here, the city, uh, you know, and I also think that too, it's like, a, 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 as a, 
very intense professional athlete for 12 years. It's also important for me to have a good work life balance, which I've really never had because I've been so focused. Um, yeah. So Portland is definitely uh, yeah, the spot for us. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, as far as there's, there's the one, I'm sure you see this play back all the time. The recovery save that you made um, with Portland, oh, was it last year? Where yeah, yeah, came sure, out sure, that through yeah. ball, uh, and then recovered and tipped the ball over the bar. Um, yeah. I, I show that to my goalkeepers uh, when it happened. I, I I took that clip and I showed them, and I go, "Listen, this was done on the training pitch. This like this is how this guy is, man. Like you just you just have to understand that. Like, I mean." Some guys, you're right, are just like, uh, everything comes easy, right? Everything comes easy. But, right. um, you know, that was done on the training pitch. And, and that was a save that I'm sure you'll have in the highlights forever, man. Is, was, that, was that one of the best saves you've ever made? Or you think well, it's certainly like at the time. Okay, so it's a, I'm, I haven't talked through this save yet with any goalkeeping, uh, goalkeeping nerds. So I'm glad that hopefully people can. Okay, so. And I'll show it. I'll do a video overlay. So don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right on, right on, right on. Okay, let me just like before. Yeah, okay, so. The, the, the thing is, is that number one, and, and I believe the goalkeeping position, the only time I've had success is when I'm aggressive. I just, I cannot play on my heels. I just cannot play thinking, hoping things don't go bad. I just have to bring the game to my opponents. That's yeah. just the only way. And even from a focus standpoint of starting focused on playing sweeper keeper, it just is is for me a total game it's a game it, it's when my game's good i'm i'm literally like hoping they play a ball over the top so i can come oh, out yeah. and clear it oh, yeah. you know um and 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 so that is kind of the way i play so you the the backstory on salt lake city in that game in the playoffs last year is the the wind was incredible and the rain was like sideways and it, the tv did not do it justice man i'm yeah. like ding man no one knew what we were dealing with out there <laughs> and it was so bad that in warmups I was glad that I was in this point in my career because in warmups, I, I, I was thinking, wow, like I could call, pull on all that experience I've had playing in tough climates in Scandinavia because this was one of the most difficult, it was the most difficult weather game I've ever had in the MLS by far, probably 2X yeah. of yeah. any game. So when Kyle Beckerman came up to hit that through ball, you know, I like to play very, I kind of have a unique way to play when, when you know, teams have possession I get really low and kind of just stalk the field so I'm reading that pass and the wind took it in a way that uh Corey Baird was running onto that ball I believe if the wind wasn't that bad I would have cleared it out or picked sure. it up sure. so when he came in I realized I was late and I couldn't really judge if he was going to get there or not so already I'm behind in the save he he flicks the ball into my chest and I kind of noticed that as I flick that ball, I can win this second one. And I'm making that split second determination. Yeah. Do I go slide tackle this or am I going to, you know, cause I thought the worst thing would be, I'm out of my goal. He gets to it, passes it across, they tap it in sure. and then it's going to be, so I go then run and slide tackle it. And it was like the best slide tackle I've ever made, but it went right to Herrera outside of the right foot. Left foot, left foot. left foot. Yeah. So then I'm kind of like, all right, I'm safe. But then I realize he, he takes a good touch. And that's when I start sprinting. And as I'm running back. You're like, he's um, not going to shoot it. He's not going to hit it. Yeah, he's not going to shoot So he rips it. Yeah. And as, when I tip it over, I don't realize how, how good it would look on film. In, in my moment, I'm just kind of like, like, guys, what's going on? Why am I the – like, to my defenders, I'm kind of like, what, what – why is this happening basically you know like where could we not get a little more pressure on that ball that's awesome dude it, it was a great save man I, I remember i think um uh, i've watched it probably over 50 times but uh only because i keep showing goalkeepers in that it's it's just a fantastic sequence it, it's one of those that you'll always remember um last last little bit here and i appreciate the time uh, i want to get into your quarantine routine Sure. Um, as far as you're coming back from an injury a little bit, uh, so you're trying to take care of your body, but um, what, uh, what are you doing as far as workouts go for you? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm not, so now today is like my first day healthy. So I did a, I did a pretty hard uh, interval workout. Um, I have, uh, I, like I said, I have a backyard and I have medicine balls. I have kettlebells. I am going to get um, Olympic 
uh, a weight, you know, kind of like a, like a, a bar and some plates so I can do some Olympic lifting. So basically number one goal is to be fit when, when we return, I need to be able to train at a level, you know, basically like coming into preseason level. Number two, my goal is to, um, you know, strengthen all these core muscles and, and kind of get a really good program of, you know, back health, core strength, groin, any hamstring, any of those injury prone areas. So I'm going to really dial in, try to get stronger there. And, um, my wife puts me through for the fitness capacity. My wife puts me through high intensity interval training. So today we did five sets of one minute, five, five times. So I did 25 minutes of one minute, like stair runs in our house, stairs <laughs> and jump rope. Yeah. And then I'm doing like footwork through a ladder on the driveway, yeah. um, ball, ball slams with a medicine ball. But the other part too, man, and this is kind of like the thing, like it's not impossible to like get stronger, increase your vertical leap during this like pandemic. So I'm going to come back jumping, be jumping higher Love and it. be more explosive and have quicker feet than I was when we, when we stopped two weeks ago. And, and that's kind of the thing when you kind of meant, you know, you touch on my mentality, it's like, that is possible. And I'm going to do that. Like, that's yeah. just what's going to happen. And yeah. I'm going to go back and I'm going to be flying and I, and that's going to be the, what it is. Yeah, that's great. I mean, goal setting goes right back to it, go, comes full circle. And, um, we're all given this, uh, it's, it's a unique opportunity. It's, it's a tough time, obviously, but it's a unique opportunity to reset um, and, and really just focus in on our weaknesses. And, and I hope everyone takes that mentality. Um, is there one, is there one thing like exercise wise that you would recommend to a youth goalkeeper? If, Hey, if, if nothing else do this and, and yes, what is it? Yeah. Great, great question. Yeah. Sorry. I jumped the gun. I'm going, I, I think that for me, just the ladder, hit the ladder, get quick feet. And if you can add in some old school, you know, get the cones and do the 10 cones lined up, which I'm sure there's, you can go to my YouTube video that I did. I mean, when I was in college, like for me, footwork is kind of the, um, is the basis to goalkeeping, especially for medium, like, like your size, my size goalies who are like six foot, six one, yeah, not big. you know, you, you know, and it's footwork. It's, it's moving your feet to the ball. You know, I think that one thing I vividly remember about you training with you, Andy, is you know, your set position was so consistent, so calm. And like, you could move out of that set position to use your feet either to push or if you had to, you know, take a step and collapse down. And I, I, I have, I, it's so funny. I have a vivid remember of watching you when I was training with you at the crew and being like, dang, man, like his set position is so calm. He doesn't have a huge jump. He's got a little, little preset, but his feet are down. Like I need to get that in my game. Um, and I think footwork for me is, is, is part of that. And Steve, I appreciate that. But the one thing like I take out of that is you're not only while you're getting your reps, but when you're not is what are you doing? You're getting mental reps. You're watching, you're, watching, you're learning. Hey, what is he doing? What, 100%. What would I do different? I mean, this is something when I, when I watch some of the kids train and if, it, if they're not in the goal, man, they're juggling the ball around or something. Dude, get mental reps. That's how you get better. Oh, totally. You can learn. I mean, you can even now, if, as I'm the number one, I'm watching all the, the two and the three and the four because somebody, every goalkeeper has something I don't have that I can learn from. For and, sure. that, and even, even if I was watching your, you know, your Academy guys, train, I, I would be like picking up what they're doing. What, what's going on with them? Wow. He moves great. What is he doing? There's nothing, you know, what you just said, watching goalkeepers to see how they're doing or what are they doing? Well, that I can copy is so important. Yeah. Uh, dude, I, I really appreciate the time, man. I, I will say this to my goalkeepers out there. Um, I know we get a lot of Tim Melia here. Uh, it's just the yes. guy, and he's fantastic. Um, but I urge uh, my kids to watch Portland Timbers play when the season hopefully picks back up. And when you come in, I've been telling this to people, they won't be so mean to you, man. They'll, uh, not that it'll bother you. You'll have a, hey. more fans, you know. KC's always a tough place to play, man. Yeah. So I, I, I'll be prepared for that warm-up in front of the Blue Cauldron like they <laughs> always do. But, hey, I love Tim too, man. Yeah. I, I mean, Tim, I mean, Tim's a nice story. Like he's kind of, I mean, I love Tim's game. I mean, I think he's a phenomenal goalkeeper, dude. I, I just really do. I think he's, he's, he's everything that's good with American goalkeeping. I can promise yeah, you that. I love Tim's story. game. Appreciate your time, man. Um, be safe. And, uh, and I hope to see you back on the field. Awesome, man. Thanks so much, Andy. Bye-bye. Right, take care, buddy.